and welcome everyone to this uh, community call. Um, so it's the fourth community call uh, that we are organizing in order to to better um, present and detail what we are developing uh, regarding the, the services for um, content providers, for open air content providers, managers, targeting uh, mainly repository managers, create system managers and others also uh, editors from open access journals. Um, so, and uh, to, to detail some novelties, to share with you some of the developments that we are doing and also quite important to collect some feedback also from you. In the previous community calls, we already have some, uh, some kind of contributions from the community, but we, of course, we want to hear more. Uh, it cannot be only us presenting you, but also to have your use cases or your doubts or your problems that you, if you are facing uh, with, with some of the services of Open Air. So this is the, the main idea um, of these calls and feel part of the, the Open Air, feel part, uh, this is why we have this community calls, is for you to feel part of Open Air because you are um, the one important contributor for the for the infrastructure um, for the, the open air infrastructure um, so the the main so today uh, we have um, the main topic is about the um, the aggregation uh, the, the open air aggregation in enrich, in enrichment processes how how it works uh, all the workflows so we will have with us um, Alessia Alessia Bardi and um, and Andreas from uh, Bielefeld Alessia uh, from CNR is in Pisa Italy and Andreas from UniB from Bielefeld University in Germany to better detail this 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 part but uh, of course you can put your questions during the presentations or at the end we can we can we can reserve some time for comments questions uh, um, addressing the the issues presented during the the, the presentation of Alessia and Andreas or about any other issue that you have related with the services for content providers. Uh, as you know, all the information, so the, the notes, uh, the agenda, the recordings of these community calls are available in, in this web page. Uh, specifically for uh, the provide community calls open uh, in the in the open air available in the open air portal. Um, before we start with Alessia and Andreas' presentation, I just want to highlight uh, four. Uh, so usually I have some time here to highlight some some novelties, mainly about the services or functionalities that we have in provide dashboard. So we don't have so many things, so many new things uh, available. I just want to highlight um, two related with the, the provide dashboard. The first one is that we are working on um, a redesign of the, the user interface of the dashboard. So we are now, so we have available a version since October 2018. That was like say the first version one of the of this new service where we gather all the services for uh, content providers in one single uh, point the dashboard uh, we know that uh, this first version was was important for us to release this service but we know that there are some issues regarding the user experience so we want to improve uh, a bit we received some comments in several workshops we did or even webinars and we are improving based on the, your feedback but um, we will put this new, the new version that we have uh, in the in beta, okay, for you to check. It's not available yet, but uh, in the coming one or maximum two weeks, we will have available this uh, this new layout of the dashboard and some new functionalities in beta. And we want your participation. We have uh, three or four repository managers that we are already involving in order to. So, for them to check the version in, in, in beta and to, re, to receive their feedback, but we want more. We don't want 100, but we want uh, 10 or, or 12 uh, repository managers to check the, um, the recent developments that we are doing in the provide. So share with us your availability if you want to participate uh, in this, in this um, uh, user board uh, that we want to, to, to have to, 
to properly evaluate this version in order then to, to put it in production based on also your comments. So if you are, uh, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you have some availability and if you want to participate, just share with me this availability, just send me your email, just send me an email that I will put you in the, in the user board. Uh, and we will contact you soon during uh, this month in March in order for you to check the, um, the beta version and to participate in a um, user assessment online session, okay? Um, the other uh, information is just an highlight. We have already this, this the collection monitor feature uh, available in the, in the dashboard um, since several months ago, but uh, so in the in the specific part of the um, of the of the collection monitor under the the validation menu you can check um, the status of your of your um, aggregation um, Alessi and Andreas will detail a bit more what uh, the different uh, mentions in this um, collection monitor page uh, means uh, but I just want to highlight that you can follow um, so the aggregation history, when was the last time that we have aggregated content, and there is a, a label, a blue label that you can find uh, and that you can easily check where when was the last um, index version uh, in, in the open air portal. So you can check uh, what was the last date that we have updated um, the, the open air um, explore service based on your last uh, the the last time that we have aggregated content from your repository and i would like also to to uh, advise you to subscribe the newsletter it's a newsletter a new newsletter that we have in open air to just targeting the the content provider managers uh, it's available in the open air portal you can subscribe uh, so andrea will also share my colleague andre Vieira from you will also share here the link in the chat just for you to subscribe. And uh, you, we have also the public um, roadmap, our Trello uh, roadmap uh, about provide where we are putting the um, things that we are releasing and um, uh, the new functionalities available. Uh, so, if, and you, you can also provide their feedback, okay? Um, it's it's important just to, be, to for you to be sure that we have um, this different means to collect your feedback. So um, now we will have Alessia and Andreas to detail this uh, this part about your panel aggregation and enrichment processes. I think this is quite important for you to be aware more of uh, how everything works uh, on the back end of uh, of um, of open air. Uh, all the workflows. Uh, we receive several questions if we're by, via different channels regarding this uh, to, to better understand these processes. So I think this is a, a good a good topic for this community call. Um, okay, so um, who will start? I'm not sure who will who will start if Alessia if and Andreas, but just yes, I, I will start. Then. Okay, Alessia. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Alessia, to be available also to provide these explanations. Uh, th thank you for inviting me to to join these community calls, which are always very interesting. <laughs> so, um, but can I share my screen? Yes. Yes, I will stop sharing, and I think now you can. start sharing okay okay perfect perfect okay okay good so um as Pedro was saying this presentation this webinar is about the uh, open air aggregation workflows and the processes that are uh, in place to enrich the, the metadata records that we collect from uh, from the different data sources that are uh, in the open air network. So uh, the first thing to, uh, to explain is that um, we have this uh, aggregator technology which collects metadata and full text from the providers 
and and thanks to this technology we are able to build what we call uh, the open eye research graph uh, which is basically a graph of open metadata about uh, research products with access rights information with linking with links to funding information so projects funders and funding streams and links to research communities and infrastructures that contributed or are interested in in these research products so uh, why we use a graph we use a graph uh, because as you can see all these entities publications data software projects organizations they are all linked to each other so using a graph model to uh, represent this kind of information is uh, somehow a natural option that allows us to represent the um, the open science uh, the, the product in the open science framework these are some numbers that you can see uh, in the production and in the beta portal so we have more than 10,000 data sources that provide different types of content ranging from metadata about publications and data sets to metadata about uh, projects and software for example um, and you can see a big difference in the numbers in, of publications so 37 millions in production and one and more than 100 millions in beta uh, because we are experimenting with new sources of metadata As so how do we reach this number of aggregated content so as i said we collect metadata links full text from all these sources not only in europe but all over the world <laughs> and in addition to um, repositories we also collect information from aggregators but also from other important um, sources of scholarly communication works so we have uh, unpaywall uh, open citations microsoft academic graph software heritage and projects from cordis and other national and international funders uh, we have organizations from grid ac we have a number of publishers, journals from the OAIJ, and specific sources that serve uh, research communities and, in, and infrastructures, like the European Grid Infrastructure, EPOS, uh, DARIA, and Elixir GR. And this can be done um, thanks to the collaboration that we, that we are having with these research communities and infrastructures so if we have a look at a very high level of what, what happens uh, in the aggregator is that we collect um, data sources so registries repositories open access journals aggregators publishers and free systems we collect um, this information um, i mean we collect information that these data sources offer uh, so metadata relationships and full text but we also have uh, metadata relationships that user of the explore and the connect portals can add to enrich the content and also in beta we are uh, experimenting with these new sources uh which we call one is called skull explorer and contains relationships between literature products and data sets and the other one we call it doi boost which is basically um the um, the merge uh, of orchid and paywall crossref and microsoft Academ academic graph so basically uh, metadata from crossref is enriched with, with information available on the other uh, sources 
and thanks to Unpaywall, we are able to get uh, the open access version of, of, a, of a publication. All this content together forms what we call the open air research graph row. Why row? Row because there is a path that this data follows before it can be published and make available in the uh, Explore portal and our API. So the first step is the duplication. So since we collect from many sources, it is very likely that we collect different metadata records that describe the same entity. So for example, two metadata records that describe the same publication or the same organization. So we find these duplicates and they become one. After the duplication, we uh, process also the full text of the open access publication that we were able to collect from the sources. And <clears throat> thanks to this uh, mining technique, we are able to find links to projects, links to data sets and software, affiliations, uh, subject classification terms, citations, and other information that was not available in the metadata that we collect. So thanks to this, we are able to enrich the metadata that we collect from the sources. But we can go even further because we can apply some deduction technique that allows us to understand if a research product is relevant for our research community or infrastructure. And this is done considering uh, some of the information that is available in the record itself. So for example, based on the provenance of the record uh, or based on the keywords. For example, we have some <clears throat> discipline specific communities like digital humanities and cultural heritage. So we know that uh, when something um, contains a keyword, which is art, we know that this is relevant for, for this community. And the final step is the propagation. So um, the propagation, thanks to the propagation, we are able to uh, pass the information from one object to another that is connected to it by a strong uh, relationships. So for example, if a publication is supplemented by uh, a data set, uh, the abstract of the publication can be propagated to the data set so that the data set becomes uh, more easily discoverable. Um, and that, at this point, we have the complete open air research graph that is used to calculate statistics and you can see that in Open Air Monitor. And that is also, and the graph is visible and searchable uh, via uh, the Explore portal, the community gateways available under Connect, and uh, our APIs. And this is very important because the uh, European Commission participant portal is one of the clients of our APIs. So, um, if a publication has a link to a project, the coordinator of that project uh, will be notified about this publication in the participant portal. And he will be able to uh, accept or discard the suggestion when he's performing the continuous reporting for the European Commission. So there are two main integration scenarios for data sources. Uh, one is the direct harvesting, and this is what we do for repositories and journals. And there is the indirect harvesting, and this is what we do thanks to aggregators and publishers. Um, basically, the idea is that if we have an aggregator, we can collect from the aggregator the metadata that reflect our, um, 
hosted by another source. So um, in most of the cases, we are able to uh, understand which is the original source. And this is thanks to the information in the record themselves, because the applicator often contains information about the original repository. So their open door or read free data identifiers or, or something that can be um, resolved as a, an open door or read free data identifier. While for journals, we have the ISSN numbers. Uh, Unfortunately, this is not always the case. And this is why in the portal, you will see the unknown repository. So basically, this is when we were not able to resolve the original repository. So we collected from the aggregator and we don't know who's the uh, maintainer of the record, let's say. And if you want to know which are the sources that we collect via aggregators and publisher, uh, you can search um, the data sources and look for the collected from a compatible aggregator. So the sources that are uh, tagged with this label are those that have been harvested thanks to an aggregator. In any case, um, metadata is provided um, in a format that is compliant to the guidelines. And I think that you know, uh, you know this very well. Uh, we have different guidelines for different providers. So for, um, for publication repositories and journals, for data archives, for CRIS platforms, for software repositories and other and also other research products uh, repositories. And regarding software and other research products, basically uh, this is something that uh, is new and we are experimenting with, with some of them. So how to join the aggregation, how to join the infrastructure and so be aggregated by OpenR. So the first step is to validate. Uh, so you check that the record you supply is compliant to the guideline, and then you register. And once you register, you can enter in the, in the aggregation of OpenAir. So here you can see uh, what happens. Basically for each, a data source, we create an aggregation workflow, which is composed of two uh, stages. The first one is collection, the harvesting, and then we have the transformation. And, and all these workflows are um, autonomous and we can configure it and each of them can be configured to execute automatically uh, after uh, in a scheduled way. So we can see, for example, from this repository, uh, run the aggregation workflow once a week. For this, that repository, run the aggregation workflow once a month. So this is uh, highly configurable uh, at the level of the, single, of the single source of the single repository. Um, in addition to the aggregation workflow, you can also see the full text collection. So this means that when we, ha when we can, we, we try to collect uh, the full text of the open access publication. And the full text will also be stored inside the open air aggregator. Um, and these files will be used by our uh, inference, information inference system to perform full text uh, mining on top of them. Now, going back to the metadata that we aggregated with the aggregation workflows. Um, periodically, all these workflows are stopped and we take a snapshot. 
So it's like, mm, it's like we take a picture of what uh, has been collected so far, and we basically build the open eye research gra graph starting from this snapshot. And of course, all these processes could not work without the Bielefeld team, uh, which is the open air aggregation team. And this team performs a lot of activities, like the activation of the aggregation workflow for each source. They check uh, that the data is supplied in the proper in the proper way. So they check that your OAI PMH point is working, that uh, the format is the one that we expect. Um, and they also configure the transformation step. And the transformation step uh, is needed because uh, we want to assign the proper typologies to the records. So we want basically to uh, be sure that records falls in the proper place in the portal. So we give them labels that tells if this is a literature product, a data set, a software, or if it is something else. And in addition, thanks to this transformation step, uh, believe that the aggregation team can address some metadata quality imperfections. So um, it can make the metadata a little bit better than the version that has been collected. And of course, when there are some imperfections, in some cases they can be solved uh, in, during the transformation step. In other cases, uh, we need actions um, on the source, so on the repository side. And uh, so this is why in some cases the open air aggregation team contacts you and suggest improvements, suggest corrections, um, or maybe uh, they also ask you for permission to download the open access full text. Okay, in, in this diagram, uh, you can see what I was mentioning before about our attempts in uh, putting the records, uh, putting the, ri the right labels uh, to the records. So, for example, from, public from publication repository, from institutional repositories, we collect publications, but we also collect data sets, software, uh, other research products, and similar cases uh, also for, um, for the other types of sources that we have. And if you have questions on this, um, Andreas can, uh, can address them. Regarding the open access full text. So, um, I, I wanted to highlight uh, that Open Air collects the open access full text, which are hosted uh, at the repository, but uh, Open Air does not uh, redistribute them. So this means that the link that you will find um, uh, to access the full text via the Open Air Explore portal is not an Open Air URL. This is the, exactly the URL to your repository. So you can see um, uh, this is a benefit from the repository point of view because uh, the, the Open Air Explore portal could be an additional entry point for users to your content. And if you enable the usage statistics, which is one option that is available in the provide dashboard, you will also uh, get uh, usage statistics uh, that include uh, the views on open air and the full text download uh, via the portal of open air. The other important things that we can do uh, if you provide us with the full text is that we can 
run mining algorithm and we can find things that are not available in the metadata and you will be able to get back this new information using uh, the notification broker and of course this is also the a way that um, for other repository to know your version your open access version of the paper so for example if um, one repository has the metadata record about a publication but only a closed full text uh, that was deposited by by the researcher maybe another repository instead has the open access version so um, this will allow the exchange and the dissemination of open access version of full text uh, between repositories and this can be done again via the broker and yeah and finally as i was mentioning also before thanks to the connection of the ec participant portal uh, if open air knows that there is an open access version of a paper uh, it will be uh, easier for the project coordinator to report it to the commission uh, in the EC participant portal. So how to monitor your aggregation workflow? So if you go on provide and you select uh, under the compatibility, compatibility menu item, you will find the menu entry collection monitor and if you click on it you will see this uh, line this line with circles and um, rectangles with information about what um, what happens to the data that we collected from from your source and there is a lot of information in this uh, in this page so first of all, each box uh, is an aggregation stage. If you remember what I said before, we have two steps. We have collection and transform. So this is, um, both are visible in this, uh, in this page of provide. And, uh, and you also have the date, of course, when, the, when this aggregation stage happened. And for the collect uh, aggregation stage, so for the collection, you can also know if OpenAir collected everything from your repository or only a part of it in incremental mode. So when you see incremental mode, it means that we only collected the records that were updated since the previous collection. So if we assume that uh, oops, sorry. So, if here uh, you see incremental, then you know that we collected the records um, that were updated since 14th of uh, February. The other information you have is the number of records that have been collected. And since, since we're talking about stages that are um, in the same pipeline, you can assume that uh, a collection is always followed by a transformation. And they are um, two stages of the same pipeline. So um, here you can say, yes, the same pipeline, but the number of records is different. And this is a good question. There are many reasons why this could happen. Uh, in some cases, some records have to be discarded by the aggregation team in the, transform, in the transformation stage uh, for several reasons. One reason could be that um, those records are not uh, compliant to the guidelines. And this is one reason why uh, the record has been discarded. As a suggestion, when you see uh, this situation, you can validate again your repository and check the record. This could give you a hint uh, on the issue that 
could be uh, in, in the data you are exposing. Then, if you look for the open air logo, you will find out which is the version of the records that are visible in the open air explore portal. Um, and you can also see that thanks to the blue badge that says indexed version. Uh, so basically, if we look at the slide, we have the version of the record of St. Valentine's Day that are visible in the portal, the 14th of February. Um, but Open Air collected again on the 22nd. So Open Air collected on the 22nd, but that version of the records is not yet visible in the export port. However, we have to remember that some of the records were discarded. So, in fact, uh, in the graph uh, generation pipeline, only the number of records that is visible in the transform box uh, ended up uh, into the open air research graph. Are there any questions so far? I can see some comments in the chat, but I don't see questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, Alessia, we have uh, one question now in the chat. Uh, is it possible to have results of collection monitor for few repositories in a table or CSV files? I've checked these collectors for 15 repositories, so I need to click 15 times. Uh, uh, yeah, I understand the, the issue. Um, in, in fact, this is uh, something that technically is possible because this means that your account is associated to 15 repositories. Is that correct? <laughs> no. Or he know, she knows the account of 15 repository managers. <laughs> but it's not. a special case for an important person in Serbia <laughs> in the repository managers world. <laughs> no, because if you're uh, if you have visibility of all 15 repositories with the same uh, account, then this is possible. If instead, every time you log in with a different one, uh, this is not possible. But Jana is confirming that her account is connected with... Ah, this is new for so. me. <laughs> 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 uh, so, yeah. You are the boss. <laughs> yeah, so I think that this is something that uh, that can be done. Yeah. Open air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the enrichment processes. Okay, as I said before, we infer information by performing full text and data mining, uh, but we also do more uh, for different reasons. So we want to foster uh, PIDs. So uh, we try to propagate the ORCID IDs uh, whenever we find it uh, reasonable. So when we are able to understand that the author of a publication, for example, is the same author of a data set. So we propagate this ORCID. And also, um, when, yes, from publication to data set or publication to another publication, whenever we understand that the author is the same. Um, we want to enrich the graph to improve discovery. So 
which are to propagate abstracts from articles to data sets and software. It was usually metadata about literature products are richer, much more richer than the metadata that we have for data sets and software. Uh, we want to improve monitoring. And um, if we think about monitoring at the institutional level, it's very important for us to add information about um, relevant organizations, affiliations um, for, for the product. Uh, what we are currently working in addition is to identify links between articles and the relative presentations and to identify hidden research software because currently we're able to find links between literature and software whenever the software is available in uh, public uh, software repositories like GitHub uh, or others, software heritage. Uh, but in fact, uh, in most of the cases, uh, not, not in most, but in some, in some cases, researchers just uh, upload a zip file or other types of archives on the web. Uh, and we would like to find links to those software as well. Okay, so here we see again the the supply chain from the open air research graph row to the final open air research graph and the first step is the duplication so at the beginning i said that whenever we find metadata records that are describing the same objects uh, we put them together now we can discuss i think several days about what does it mean for two records to describe the same object uh, in the context of open air, uh, since we want to provide statistics and monitoring, uh, we consider the preprint, the postprint, uh, and the published version as the same object. So in other cases, they may not be, but in open air, they are the same. So this is why in the open air portal, sometimes you see uh, on when, when you open a page of a publication, on the right, you see that you have a version that comes from the publisher and a version that comes from um, an institutional repository. And in some cases, the version of the publisher is closed and the repository instead provides an open access version, which can be the preprint or the postprint. And this, of course, depends on, uh, on the policies that uh, uh, are in place for the specific journal where the article was published. Um, here you can also see some numbers. So um, relative to the beta infrastructure, when we also have Crossref, so we harvested 160 million metadata records about publications, and we end up with 110 million. And we also uh, perform the duplication on organization. Um, and this is done using um, the grid AC identifier as a pivot. The pivot information that allows us to, um, to group uh, metadata records describing organizations together when they're describing the same organization. Then, uh, these are the three main processes for uh, enriching the metadata into your open air research graph. The first one is inference, uh, which is applied to the metadata records that are in the graph and because um, it uses the information available in the abstract metadata field, um, but also to the full text. And in beta, we have 10 million open access full text. We are able to mine 130 million links 
some of them are links to projects, links to software, data sets, to research communities and infrastructures, and similarities between uh, publications. Uh, we also mine uh, looking for specific properties, so not, not links between entities, but properties like uh, abstract and subject classification terms and citations. Um, what we are going to integrate in beta very soon are the links to patents. And for this, our, our team uh, worked together with the European Patent Office. And so we are going to have links between publications and uh, patents available from the PATSTAT database. Uh, for the deduction of information, so the idea is that um, based on what we know about a research product, so based on the provenance of the research product, based on the subject terms that it has, we can decide if this is relevant for a community or infrastructure. So, for example, in, this, in the example here, you can see we have uh, a result which has a subject S, and the community C um, told us that uh, it's a community working on, um, on different topics, and one of these topics is S. So what we can do is to add a relationship between the research product and the community. And a similar approach is done by the information propagation technique, but uh, the information we need is not only in the, in the record we are looking, but it's in its surrounding. Uh, and we are able to propagate um, abstract links to projects, countries, communities and infrastructure, and ORCID IDs. So in the example, for, for example, you see that a result is collected from an institutional repositories, which belongs to, which belongs to, yes, which belongs to Italy, let's say, which is based in Italy. And therefore, we can tell that the result uh, can be assigned uh, to the Italian country. And as ongoing activities, we are thinking about applying the propagation uh, of uh, organization from one product to another, if they are linked by strong relationships like supplemented by or supplement to. So to tell you an example to make, to make it clear, uh, if I have a publication and one of its author is affiliated with CNR, and the publication is linked uh, to a data set and the data set has the same author, then I can say also that the data set is relevant, is connected to CNR because they have the same author. So this is um, a little bit tricky and we have to study a little bit with some uh, real use cases in order to come up with a specific uh, criteria to apply. Um, but the idea is that of uh, understanding more and more um, which are the organization, um, let's say, responsible for, for the research products, because this will allow us to build uh, more um, precise and, um, and with full coverage the institutional dashboard. And this was my last slide. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you, you can you can put your last slide and for this discussion. So we we have also here a question from from Roland. So you can you can use your microphone if you want. Uh, also, you are free to put your questions or to share your thoughts. So, but Roland have here a question. 
about the version uh, version four, version four, not five, but version four of the of the open air guidelines. Um, uh, if do I rightly assume that all the enrichment of the publications with links to data can only occur with the the open air 4.0 protocol and if repository is also open air? Yeah, I think the, here we need to 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 explain the difference between uh, so so enrichments coming from the 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 inference and the enrichment coming from the the duplication process of the different links uh, available through the the metadata records because of the the inference uh, yeah let's see please explain because the inference uh, so we uh, the the inference is just uh, based on the metadata that we have uh, and we are not taking into consideration the the level of guidelines let's say no no once the records um, are added to the open air research graph uh, then we don't care anymore about uh, the level of the guidelines um, of the sources from which we collect it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are able to um, add links, uh, to have links also for publications that were originally uh, driver compliant, for example. So there is no relationship between the guideline of the source of the provider to the opportunities uh, yeah, yeah. after entering open air. Yeah, but let's let's say that uh, so um, if a repository is exposing um, already all the so the relations within the metadata they are so um, we have in open air so the, the, the relations between. Um, publications and other publications or publications that we this is the case i think uh, for uh, with um, publications uh, with data sets so we have already that information and this is important so we need also to to check how, how to expose but then the the enrichments based on the uh, on the inference are um, so independently of the the type of metadata that we have from this specific repository and we are offering of course, enrichments, links between publications and data sets to repositories that are compliant with version one, two, three. <laughs> so previous versions. Um, but of course, we can do much more with repositories that are exposing a, a, a rich uh, metadata uh, via the open air uh, uh, 4.0 um, guidelines. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So uh, please share your thoughts or your questions. Brianna is also awesome. Brianna and uh, and uh, some others that are with with her, I suppose. <laughs> um, I, I want to highlight just two, two things that I think it's it, it quite uh, quite important. Um, so one thing is about the the collection of the of the the full text and all the advantages that Alessia have highlighted. Uh, for the fact that uh, we have or not the full text of of of, of of the um, the content that of from your repository, so of course we can provide much more rich services, added value services, if we have the the full text. But it's important to highlight one thing that Open Air uh, only use the full text for the purposes of inference and to enrich the the graph uh, and all the links that are part of this graph. So. We are not. We don't. We don't. Uh, link, we don't use the full text that we have in our backend services. Let's say to simplify uh, to to link the records from Open Air to the to the full text that we have in Open in Open Air. So we always link to the original data source. So from our from all our services, from Explore, from all the rest of the services, and we only use the full text, the PDFs that we have in our service, just to um, for inference purposes, let's say, <laughs> to generate added value services. This is important because this differentiates Open Air from some other um, similar services like like Open Air. And 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 the other and the other important information is that um, uh, it's about something that Alessia also said about organizations, uh, in in, a, in one of the two or three slides before this this last one. 
uh, and we should uh, maybe we should provide some more information about the work that we are doing regarding um, the, let's say the duplication of organizations merging of organizations for sure I, yesterday, yesterday I was discussing here with my colleague Andre about the upcoming um, upcoming topics for 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 um, for community calls and this uh, this about the the work that we are doing around organizations is quite important because this is critical for systems like us this is critical for all for all uh, real content provider managers for all repository managers so maybe maybe you can just share a little bit more um uh, alessia what we are experimenting in order to enrich our our graph in terms of um, organizations and later on for sure i think um, close to the summer or just after the summer we should have one call dedicated to this um, to the organizations let's say or the, the organizations in open air uh, graph let's say yes do you want yeah yes so uh for okay finding duplicates um of organizations is um, it's not so easy because the metadata available that describes organizations is just a few. We have the name, the acronym, sometimes the country, sometimes uh, we have the website, sometimes, but it can be different even if the organization is the same. So um, we yeah, have just, 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 just before, just, of, well, yes, 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 just before. So just wait to to just to put in, in 10 seconds the problem that the, the fact that the open air is collecting from different sources we are collecting or information about organizations also from different sources from uh, from from open door uh, from the organizations of each repository for example and from the funders um, and of course affiliations within the the publications and things like that so so we need so in some point is a mess <laughs> to manage this and so this is why we have a, a plan to 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 better organize this mess <laughs> yeah yes uh, thank you pedro for the precision yeah. it was very important yeah uh, so this is a hard task to do and we had we have automatic process that runs trying to identify duplicates but we can do better we know because often we cannot really put together two organizations which are the same. Uh, in other cases, instead, two organizations that are clearly different, if you are a human and you look at, and you look it, clearly they are different, but for a machine it's hard to understand. So basically, uh, we reached a stage where we cannot delay or postpone any more um, accuration process on this aspect. So, we are basically uh, working on a tool that will enable a trusted person, a trusted team of persons, uh, which will be composed basically by uh, our national open access desk, the open air national open access desk, so that each node will uh, create, manually create the organizations of other country. So this will be very, very useful to address those cases that cannot be captured uh, automatically and fix and fix the issue. Uh, then, of course, we um, Pedro said that we have affiliations inside the metadata records, and we have, but we could have more because um, if you remember the beginning of my presentation, I. I said that we are also including metadata records coming from uh, Crossref, Microsoft Academic Graph, um, and we are including, but we are not taking all the affiliations they are providing. So uh, the number of organizations and the number of affiliations that will be available in the graph in the next months will further increase. Uh, and so, yes, we are going to put more and more information uh, inside. Yes. So we are coming to the end, but we need also to. So, so uh, Bianchi Alexander is uh, is also. Do you mean Open Door or Ingrid? I think it was referring to. Uh, 
Well, we collect uh, information about the organization from Gridacy, from Open Door, from Retrie Data, from DOEJA, which provides information about the journals, um, and, uh, and then the funders, because they give us information about the organizations that are participating into the projects they fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're talking about the funders, so uh, I forgot, so <laughs> Brianna sent me an alert uh, because Brianna put another question additionally to the to the um, to the congratulations to your presentation Alessia so just to ask about uh, and this is important this uh, this link between um, the um, the index update and the information available in monitor so yeah, yeah so um, we try to have uh, updated content in the index uh, every two weeks sometimes we uh, we cannot really make it because we are the, i mean the, the size of the graph is big and sometimes some issues arise and we have to start again from scratch and the issues become even worse when we come to the statistical analysis of the graph so uh, often what happens that we are able to update the index but uh, we are not able to update the statistics. So this is why in monitor uh, the numbers uh, are often not um, uh, not the same. So whenever we perform an update, however, we update a page uh, on the Open Air portal, which is the one that you can reach. Uh, where is it? Uh, with this link, last index information. If you click on it, you will be redirected to this page where you have an overview of the aggregation and content provision workflows. And at the end, you have the table where we inform when the index uh, is updated and when the statistics are updated. I'm very sorry for the delay um, with the statistics. Our, our team is working to improve, they're working on a new technology and that should be ready soon. So this gap should be filled uh, in the next period. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, if you, we are coming to the end, we, we, if you want to put more questions, you can, you can put it. If you just also uh, enable your microphone because you can also talk if you want. Um, Andrea is just highlighting. Do we, do we have a new question? Okay. Uh, can I ask you something that unfortunately is a bit out of topic, please? Um, uh, can you, you can hear present me? yourself? Yes. 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 I, I sorry, you you can see me. I'm uh, Alessandra Bianchi from the EPFL. Uh, so we I updated also. our 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 um, our OIS, uh, OIS set, uh, to the version four. Uh, and we still can't uh, can't check it, uh, so we, we can't see it uh, neither in the explore production, uh, and neither in the in the in the beta. So when it was, it was the recent recently. Uh, the yes, it was. This, this, no, no, no. This work began on November. We were okay, validated okay. and registered in November, etc. Then I know that we were. Uh, that, that happened some index problems, uh, as as the, as you had this told to me. Uh, I would like to know where if uh, if uh, if a new index uh, update is uh, in order to see our transformer metadata, the new version, because we are still harvested as simple driver. It seems as it seems in both uh, in both the in both the. Um, the production and beta. Okay. I was also told. I was okay. also told that we are harvested uh, in the version four, but what is exposed is still a driver. But, but I, I can't understand this. I'm really sorry. Perhaps it's only me. So if it's of no interest, uh, I can. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think that to, to reply, we need some more information. Yeah, yeah. Just, just write in the chat the right uh, in name name of the 
press to facilitate. Uh, mm -hmm. Emily, Emily is also in the call, so maybe Emily. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you, you remember hear me? this case, I suppose? Yeah. You hear me? Yes. 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 Ah, okay. Yes, uh, that's why I uh, decided to chime in. Exactly. Yes, um, Alessandra and uh, I, we talked about the case. Um, well, the problem is that the beta index hasn't been updated in such a long time. And um, I don't know either when it will be ready. Maybe you can shed some light on it. Because in, in the beta system, the um, version 4 metadata is aggregated, but of course, because of the index uh, delay, it's not um, visible on the beta portal. No. Okay, so okay. yeah, I have a quite good news on this because um, my colleague is telling me that he's now performing some quality checks on the new content for the beta. So we think that we will be able to put the new content available for the public in the next days. So I'm very sorry for... In, in better in better in order to be checked, not in, in production based on the this new... in better. Yes, yes, because in production okay. since November we already did uh, one, two, three, four, five updates of the portal. So, so it let's, was a let's say, in yeah, Explore. Yeah. Uh, production so let's 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 say change some information to just to send a a concrete uh, reply to alexandra uh, yeah. and to also a timeline for the to have the information properly uh, available in production okay but thank you alexander it's it's your case uh, but it's uh, the case of other institutions so it's i think it's important always to what you did to comply with the new version of the, the guidelines is also what others are, are doing so it's important so we can put another questions i just want to highlight if uh, i will use the uh, us presenter let's see i only have two slides just to make two highlights at the end if you can move to the next slide um so um one one thing is about the upcoming call, so be aware that we have this page where we put all the information about the previous calls and the future calls. So uh, you will find the recordings, the slides, okay, and also some notes. But um, what is important is that we please put in your calendar the upcoming calls. We have already all the calls until the summer. So and for the for the call in April. We will um, have as main topic the um, the this space Chris um, use case, so an implementation of uh, of a, the Chris guidelines um, with some use cases to present. I think it's uh, it's important for those that are also participating in this Chris um, ecosystem. So to be aware and for repositories that are also uh, that have some connections with the Chris systems. So uh, we will have other topics. Uh, so the main is the novelties and also the information that we can provide to you. But uh, this will be the main topic in the, on the call of the 1st of, of April. Um, and uh, the, other, the other slide is just uh, once again to highlight about the newsletter. So uh, as we have now this newsletter, we have also a list of newsletters. So we always want to use this new channel to to highlight some some relevant information for you based on so service, services developments training and support materials etc so um we are coming to the end we have one more question here the michaela hubert okay sorry i did not hear all of it what do no ads have to manually create or to collect ah, okay this was about the the organization so we are but we will we will share with all the open air no ads and um, uh, and with the the community the work we are doing around the organizations to to better present and organize the organizations and the affiliations uh, of the authors in the in the open air infrastructure this is a, a task that we are let's say in a testing phase, uh, 
I must say that I must confess that personally, uh, what I saw um, when um, when the colleagues from CNR presented, it's great. So it's um, it's a great way to so to kind of a single entry for the organization. So we we manually curate or automatically uh, merge them. But uh, I think this will be really good to increase the quality of the of of, of open air and also then we can also use this um, to think about some added value services for them, for the community, for the content providers, for repositories, etc. But um, what I promise, uh, what we promise is that we will do one community call about this and to show uh, what we are doing, okay? And involve always the community. Okay, thank you all. Uh, so for those that uh, arrive a little bit late, so you can check the recordings later, we will publish today during the afternoon.